Okay, let's go to our next audience question. Hi, I'm Ed Church with the Institute for Environment, Environmental Entrepreneurship. I'd like the uh, panel to comment uh, on the water-related issues of fracking, which mm -hmm. uses vast yeah. amounts of fresh water and then threatens to pollute the groundwater tables. Senator Fuller, fracking happens in Kern County? Well, the first water. of all, um, I'd like to say that, again, it's, if you look at the bigger picture, so right now, like it or not, fossil fuel is a, the largest part of our portfolio for energy, and if we stopped it tomorrow, we couldn't, we couldn't provide. And fracking is, in California, different than in other areas. It uses less water. In fact, they have estimated that it really, in most cases, is only about a golf course, of what a golf course uses in a day. But having said that, it's more about, so what is the price of energy and where do we get our energy? And how much water do we have? And how do we keep a balance? In my area, 80% of the fracking is not over a water table. And the water is used very, very sparingly. And it's not like the northern coast. I think it's good for the public to become educated about it and to learn about it. But I think a moratorium would only make the water crisis worse because energy prices would go completely up, and we probably wouldn't even be able to get enough energy, especially if we did on the short term. It would have to be imported energy, which we know when you import energy, it costs money and brings more greenhouse gases. Big, big disaster, not, not really a good solution. And ultimately, that we can use technology to make all these processes safer, or we can make our, tech, our generation for energy safer or larger or more productive. So to me, it's, it's really a question. And certainly, a moratorium is not the answer. But using reason, science, and technology to move us along to better practices so that we have a balance. 